in many ways, Twilight Gods is taking opera into kind of an unusual space, not in the normal operatic, you know, the, the opera house that people are used to. And the Detroit Opera House is, is a beautiful theater, but because of the pandemic, we're not allowed to, to gather there and to hear, uh, to hear opera, to see opera um, perform on the stage. So um, it feels like a very fitting introduction uh, for, uh, for me uh, to Detroit uh, to present an opera in maybe a more uh, unusual setting, a more everyday setting, namely the Detroit Opera House Parking Center, uh, which is across the street from the Opera House and belongs to the opera. Um, so it feels like a potential for it to be considered a second uh, opera house, you know, <laughs> in some ways. And what we're doing is doing a performance there that is for groups of eight cars at a time. And they move through the parking center and move from level to level in that parking center. On each level of the, uh, of the parking center is uh, a, a scene from Wagner's opera, Twilight of the Gods. And so it culminates, it's, you know, normally the opera is six hours. Uh, we have an abbreviated version of 60 minutes and the audience hears all of it on their FM radio. Uh, partially because of the uh, safety to make sure our audience and our artists are safe, uh, but also because it is a very cool experience to be uh, having the, the, the sound of FM radio uh, be this, uh, this transmission device uh, for this live performance. In preparing for this conversation, I, I asked you, I challenged you to prepare your <laughs> elevator speech for Wagner's Gauterdammerung fourth of his four opera ring cycle magnum opus. So yeah, how, yeah. how would you do that? <laughs> <laughs> you mean the, the full opera? I mean, if it was done right. in a conventional way, go yes. to demo, the, the last piece of Wagner cycle, the full cycle is 16 hours. This is the last of what is a four day experience. It's meant to be a totally immersive, transformative experience that tells the story of gods and dwarves and a magical ring that gives uh, power to whoever possesses it, but came at the expense of nature. It was robbed from nature, turned into a ring, and only when that ring gets returned back to nature can there ever be peace in the society that Wagner is depicting. So I think just by that, the nature of that, of that uh, description of the narration, I think it's very clear why we tell a story like this today. You know, it's it, a society that has been built so long on violence and greed and deception. And after many generations of that and watching the effects over many generations of that violence and that hatred, that the only way for things to go is for them to all uh, be basically burned to the ground so that something new can emerge. And I also feel like we're in this inflection point in our own culture now in which so many of the ways that we have been behaving as a society need to at the very least adapt if not transform completely. And that is also a big part of the story of Goethe Demelung. So it feels very fitting for our time. And I think the notion of telling a story that, that is so appropriate for 2020 and everything that we're experiencing in 2020 to do it in a way that I hope also provides a sense of hope for the future, for everyone that loves opera, for everyone that wants to see live performance come back again, and for everyone who has been missing that sense of a contact with, with artists and what art, what art and what artists provide uh, for our society. Can you give us a quick rundown on some of the performers in the major roles? Absolutely. I mean, we have uh, a truly all-star cast uh, that is headed in many ways by Christine Gerke, who is the world's leading uh, performer of the character of Brunhilde. Um, in many ways, she was the anchor for me in terms of making this production and, and, and choosing the Wagner opera. Um, of course, we could have done kind of anything in that parking center. Um, and I think it would have been uh, compelling and different and, um, and exciting. Um, but when I knew about Christine's deep connection to Detroit and her own previous performances at Michigan Opera Theater and her love of this particular community uh, and her interest in coming back, certainly while many of her other roles uh, were canceled in major opera houses. It seemed like a great opportunity to collaborate, uh, to collaborate with her on something that is truly her signature. And this is this role. Uh, and uh, so it really began with her and thinking that uh, I would just love to hear Christine sing uh, this last, the, the last scene of the piece on the roof of the parking center. Um, that is in a way the grand finale of, of, of the performance.